Okay, let's have a look at the production of soap or the saponification reaction. In order for us to get a, a good understanding of this process, we need to take a step back and look at the reactants. So soap is made up of two components. First one is a typical fat, and that could come from um, plant or animal product. And the second one is a strong lye solution. So let's have a look in more detail at that fat, or what they call a triglyceride. So we've got a complex molecule here, that on first glance it does look very complex, but we can break it down. On the left hand side, we have a group there with three carbons in it, and that particular group is called a glycerate derivative, and we'll talk more about that shortly. We've also got some long chains here, here, and here. Now those three chains look very different, but they do have a few things in common. First of all, they have this ester linkage to our glycerate derivative here. They also have a very long carbon chain. In the first example, we've got 1 plus 14 15 carbons in total, so this is what we call a palmitate derivative, and because there are no double bonds between the carbons in there, we say that it's a saturated palmitate derivative. The second one here, we've got 17, 18 carbons, once again no double bonds, so we've got a saturated version of what we call a stearate derivative. And our last example has 1, 8, 9, 10, 11, 18 carbons in its, in its chain. It's also got a double bond, so this time we've got an unsaturated carbon chain. And because it's got 18 carbons, it's an oleate derivative. So there are three sections. We've got our glycerol derivative, we've got our ester linkages, and we've got our long carbon chains. And this is what typically makes up our triglyceride molecule. We've got the three components here, which is the tri attached to the glycerate or the glycerol derivative to give us that um, animal fat or plant fat. So in using our triglyceride, we need to understand a little bit of chemistry as to what happens when we break this molecule down. Now to do that, we need to look at ester linkages. And what I've done here is take the bottom part of the molecule and simplify it, so we've got our CH2 attachment here, we've got our ester linkage in here, and I've substituted this long carbon chain for an R group. And if we put this molecule in the presence of water, and we add heat, and we have an acid catalyst, we can break this ester linkage down. So we can form two products. We can form our alkanol, so the hydrogen from our water will attach to the oxygen group there to give us our alkanol molecule. We also find that our hydroxy group of our water will attach to our um, carbonyl group here on our R group to give us an alkanoic acid group. And this particular reaction is the opposite of our esterification reaction or our condensation reaction and it's what we call a hydrolysis reaction. Very common and that forms the basis of our saponification reaction. So let's now apply that knowledge of hydrolysis to soap formation or the saponification reaction. So we've got our triglyceride, and you'll notice that I have the same R groups here. They can be different, but I'm just going to simplify it and have the same R group. To that, we add a strong base, or what we call a lye solution, and it must be a concentrated version of that lye solution. And what we find in the reaction is that the positive sodium ion, or it could be a potassium ion, will link up with the carboxyl group, or the acid group, of our um, long acid, oh sorry, long carbon chain. So we form what's called here a soap of our carboxyl, our carboxyl or carboxylic acid group. We also find that the hydroxide component of our sodium hydroxide will attach to our 
glycerate or glycerol derivative. So the other product that we'll end up with is a glycerol molecule or a 1, 2, 3, um, or, sorry, a um, propen 1, 2, 3 triol molecule, which is essentially an alkanol and we shorten that to a glycerol molecule. Let's take an example of our um, salt that we've formed here. If we substitute our R group for our stearate molecule from the first slide and we attach the sodium through an ionic bond between the negatively charged oxygen, we form the salt sodium stearate. And our sodium stearate is a very common soap molecule and it's used in the soap industry quite often. 